season don't forget. Thank you for joining us for our midweek carol service. Now this is the one that takes place more or less in the daylight, um, to, if you don't like dark nights. And for those who don't know you, don't, don't know me, you know you, don't know me. My name is Derek Robinson, I'm an elder here. And all that means is, all that, all that means is I'm getting older each year, as far as I know. Okay, so whether you've been here a hundred times, or well, whether this is the first time you've been, you are most welcome. And we're really pleased to see you. So just turn around and smile and say hello to somebody else. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Don't get carried away. Okay. Okay. Right, so... There's always one. <laughs> Okay, all right. Uh, okay. okay, in this service we'll be retelling the story of Jesus' birth and we're trying to explain to you why that is hugely significant in 2023, as well as singing several well-known carols. So I hope you're all in excellent voice because we have about 300 carols to sing. Okay? Um, and this will be followed by a, wel a welcoming warm drink and a selection of wonderful homemade cakes. So if anybody's made a cake, I just thank you very much. They look absolutely fantastic out there. But first are some basic housekeeping rules. If you need the toilets, they're out there. Go left, out the door, left if you're a man, right if you're a lady, or right if you're disabled. So there's ladies and disabled outside, gents outside. So do your best to go the right way, okay? Okay, in the unlikely event of the fire alarm going off, okay, Please exit through the marked fire doors, okay, and assemble in the car park, unless the fire's in the car park, in which case you better assemble out the back, okay? Okay, so um, let's begin with a short prayer, just get us in the right mood. Um, thank you, Lord, for sending your Son 
on one glorious night to be born of a virgin, to live a perfect life, and then to die on the cross for my sins. Thank you that he rose from the dead three days later, and that this Christmas, and every Christmas, we celebrate the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to quieten down now. We're going to sing a nice, quiet carol to start with. We're going to sing Silent Night. Now do stand if you're able, but if you're not able, just sit down. It doesn't make any difference. So we're going to sing Silent Night. So we have Brenda on the piano. Tells the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come one who will rule over Israel, whose origins, from, origins are from old, from ancient times. The Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. Yes? Our second reading is taken from Luke chapter 1 verses 26 to 38. Sorry. <laughs> In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled by his words and wondered what sort of greeting this might be. 
But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favour with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. We're now going to celebrate by singing another two carols, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and Angels from the Realms of Glory. And stand or sit, however you feel most comfortable singing, <coughs> and enjoy the carols. <laughs>
first reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. And it's called The Birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And this was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to her and was expecting a child. To him, he was expecting a child. While they were there, the time for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in strips of cloth and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for him in the inn. going to sing again, I'm sorry to say. It's hot, it's a bit hot in here, isn't it? <laughs> uh, we're going to sing two carols. These are much more well known. A Little Town of Bethlehem and Away in a Manger. That takes you back to your primary school days.
reading tells us how the wonderful news of Jesus' birth is first shared with lonely shepherds who had been expecting another quiet night with the sheep. Luke chapter 2 verses 8 to 12. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. We will now sing while the shepherds watch their flocks by night. Do stand if you are able. them in her heart. 
Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. And we're now going to celebrate the Saviour's birth by singing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, and Don't Come All You Faithful. <laughs> Joyful. 
you sit down. You're going to rest for five minutes. <laughs> now, I wonder what Christmas actually means to you. If you believe the Christmas cards, it's a time we associate with peace, love, and acceptance. But tune into the news today on the radio and you'll hear more about war, asylum seekers, cruelty, climate change, earthquake, volcanoes, and continual political wrangling and sniping. I don't think any of us can dispute our world is riddled with problems. Even in our own homes, for many, Christmas is full of stress and worry. And yet Christmas continues to captivate hearts across the generations, just like little boys do who come on the stage. <laughs> Good for you. Okay. Why? Because amidst the carol singing, festive decorations, and the gatherings with our loved ones, it's so easy to be caught up with the hustle and bustle and busyness of Christmas. It's so easy to forget about the world's problems just for a few days. But surprise, surprise, the darkness in our world will still be there when the holiday is over. So this afternoon I want to ask you a very, very simple question. Who would you trust to put the world back together and pierce our darkness with light? I won't name names, but think of a few politicians. Would you really trust them? <laughs> world leaders? No. Who would you trust? Is there anyone on earth we could turn to who would have the answer? Well, according to the Bible, there isn't a single person on earth that isn't riddled with these problems themselves. Riddled with ignorance and negligence, envy and greed, selfish hatred and sin. It infects all of us. And that brings us to the true message of Christmas. Why? Because the message of Christmas is light in the darkness. And to see that, we need to focus on the baby at the centre of the Christmas story. And in particular, that prophecy that we started the service with, written by a man called Isaiah, 700 years before Jesus was born. Isaiah told us there would be a time when people walk in the darkness will see a great light. Why? Because to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. So for a few moments, let's try to uncover this timeless message that has the power to transform our lives. So my friends, I ask you again, in the midst of the Christmas rush, what does Christmas mean to you? And if you're not sure, then today here at ABC, I want to take on a short journey to discover the true heart of Christmas. You see, in the midst of all the festivities, the carol singing, the exchange of gifts, it's easy to lose sight of the real message that lies at the centre of the season. It's so easy to miss it. Christmas is more than a date circled on your calendar. It's more than the decorations that adorn your homes and streets. It's more than the joyful songs that fill the air. Christmas is a message that resounds through the ages, a message that can transform lives. At the heart of Christmas is a story, a story of hope, love and redemption. It's a story that begins in a humble stable in Bethlehem, where a baby was born, not to earthly riches and grandeur, but to poverty and obscurity. This baby, born in a manger, was no ordinary child. He was the Son of God, the Saviour of the world. You see, the heart of Christmas is the story of God's amazing love for humanity. It's a story of how God, in his infinite mercy, sent his only Son into the world to save us from our sins. It's a story of God who became flesh and dwelt amongst us, who walked this earth, who healed the sick, who gave sight to the blind, and who ultimately gave his life on the cross to pay the price of our sins. But the story doesn't end there. The heart of Christmas is a story of victory, of how Jesus conquered death and rose again, offering us all the promise of eternal life. It's a story of forgiveness, of redemption, of a second chance. My friends, as we celebrate Christmas, let's not forget the true heart of the season. Let's remember that Christmas is not just a holiday, an escape from reality. It's, the holy, it's a holy day. It's a time to reflect on the incredible love that God has for each and every one of us. 
It's a time to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for you on the cross. Friends, it means God has not given up on us. And if you give yourself to him, he will give all of him to you. His life, his light, his love, his light in our darkness, his love in our loneliness, his hope for the future, and his forgiveness for the past. It's all there. And so I challenge you today, whether you're a believer or a seeker, to embrace the real heart of Christmas. Let the message of hope, love and redemption fill your hearts. Let it transform your lives. And if you've never invited Jesus into your heart, I urge you to do it today. Receive the greatest gift of all this Christmas, the gift of salvation, through faith in Jesus Christ. If that isn't the best news you've heard, I've messed up this little talk. <laughs> So if you still have questions, and we all have questions, more questions than answers about the meaning of life, then may I invite you to join us on a journey as we look at Christianity Explored in the new year, or similar courses. Do take an invitation card, there's some at the back, and send it to us and we'll let you know when the course is going to begin. So in closing, may the true heart of Christmas shine brightly in your lives this year, bringing peace, joy and eternal hope. And may we all remember the greatest gift we can give to anybody else this, this Christmas is a message of God's love and salvation. And may God bless you all this Christmas. Yes. St. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation when God came to earth as a baby. John chapter 1 verses 1 to 5 and then verse 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Verse 14. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So Christmas is a time of celebration. And I'm just going to say a short prayer, then we're going to sing that final song, Joy to the World. Whatever you do in this Christmas, just remember, joy to the world. Okay, let's be joyful. Father, just thank you for that wonderful message of Christmas, that you've not given up on us, that you still see us as your, your loving children. And all we have to do is turn to you and ask you to come into our lives again. Fill us with your spirit. Lead us in the way you would have us go. And Father, help us to enjoy Christmas, enjoy the news, the good news, that you sent Jesus to save us. I just thank you for that, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I know you've done a lot of singing, and a lot of, um, it's hot. <laughs> but let's raise the roof, not literally, because we can't afford it. Um, joy to the world, okay? Joy to the world. Let's sing joy to the world.
Well done with the singing. You did very well. The rib's still there, but you did pretty good. I just want to remember this short reading from Jude. It says, Dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ were told. They said to you, now listen carefully, in the last days there will be scoffers who will follow their own ungodly desires. These are the men who try to divide you, who, who follow mere natural instincts and do not know God's spirit. But you, dear friends, build yourself up in your most holy faith and pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourself in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. It starts at Christmas, but it ends with you going to eternal life with God. And if you think that's too hard, then Jude ends with this. The Jude passage ends with this. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority to Jesus Christ our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Okay, it's time to sample the cakes. There's so many out there. You don't have to fill up your plate first, go. You can go round.